So here we're going to be talking about the Brightspace Grades tool. What I want to cover today is um, go an overview of the Grades tool, um, what the setup wizard is and how to set that up. And um, is there a question? Talk about grade schemes, grading systems, how you associate grade items, entering those grades and then releasing them. We just had a new participant join. Oh, okay. All right. And uh, so unlike um, Blackboard, when you um, want to grade something in Brightspace, you're not automatically going to get a column that's created in the uh, grade uh, book for you. You have to manually create those columns. And so that was a bit of a change uh, and something that people had to get used to. So just be aware that you have to set up that grade book and then create your grade items. They're not going to uh, be created automatically for you. Um, and so when you're trying to set up your grade book, you need to indicate what type of grading system you have or you're going to use. And the grading system you use could be different between courses. So you could be using a grade system where uh, it's weighted. The grade items are counting as a percentage of that final grade. Um, you could be using a point system where the points are determining the weight of the item toward that final grade. And there's also one last option for a custom, um, which I don't think anybody at Xavier has used, or if they are, they haven't asked me about it yet. So some considerations for your grade book, which one's going to be most appropriate for the course? Like I said, you can use weighted in one course and you can use the point system in another. It just really depends on what you're trying to do. Well, you need to know what grade items you're planning to evaluate, how you're going to allocate the points or the weights across those grade items, um, which grade items you want to associate with items that are in the course. Do you want to include a milestone grade? And then how do you want to uh, calculate that final grade? In Brightspace, you find the grades tool in the nav bar on um, under the link grades. Your first time in, you get to the setup wizard. And so this setup wizard gives you the opportunity to tell the system um, what, like I said, what type of grading system you're going to use and then the various particulars about your, your uh, grading system for that course. Um, a lot of the questions that I get about um, the grade tool, grades tool, have, has to do with the fact that the individual or the professor has not gone in and um, set up the, the setup wizard to the way they actually want the grade book to work. So I would encourage you to pay some, uh, take some time with the, the answers that you choose in the setup wizard. It will save you some headache on the back end if you um, set it up the way you need it for that particular course on the front end. So when you get into the course and you get to the setup wizard, if you scroll down to the bottom of the screen, then you would see the start button. You click on start. And then there are some um, options that you have to, or steps rather, that you have to go through and uh, set up your various options. So here you would uh, choose your grading system. Notice if I had a weighted system, I would choose this radio button for weighted. They even give you an example. If you're not quite sure what a weighted system is, they give you an example of what that might be. You, uh, if you had a point system, see here is a, an example of what a point system might be. So as I said, you would choose the uh, grading system that you want to use for your course. Um, when you're setting up your grade book, there are grade categories, and you would use these to organize your grade book. They also help you to simplify weighted grade calculations. And if you happen to want to drop the highest or the lowest grade, you could do that in a uh, category. Grade item types are also important. So when you're uh, creating the grade columns, and in uh, Brightspace, they're called grade items. You have to indicate what grade item type or what type it is. Most are going to be numeric. And they're, um, so the example of that was if something was worth 10 points, I would be grading it. Maybe I would be giving the students eight out of 10. 
So if I'm if that's what I'm trying to do, then numeric would be the grade item type that I want. Um, I suspect that um, there'll be others maybe that would be uh, used going forward. Like you can use one that says pass fail um, if it's calculated. So I'm trying to calculate uh, something like a midterm grade, then I would indicate that that particular grade item type was calculated. So like I said, you choose the appropriate grade item type. And like I said, for the most part, the grade item type that you're probably gonna select is going to be numeric. Did I have a question? No? Okay, moving right along. Um, so this, is an example of what a, a grade book might look like if it were based on points. So the points are dictating the weight of the item or the importance of the item toward the final score. So this is uh, total possible points are 900. And notice the final exam is worth 400 points. So that's about 44 or so percent of the final grade. Whereas um, exams uh, one and two um, are worth about 11% of that final grade and so on and so forth. So like I said, the points here are dictating the importance and um, uh, of the, the item toward that final grade. A weighted grade book, uh, for example, may look like this, where um, I have some categories. So I have assignments that are worth 40% of the grade, quizzes worth another 10%, self-assessments, and then discussions. And here, the easier thing to do with something like this is to use categories. So I have my four categories here, and then the things that are going to be graded inside of those categories would be those the grade items, right? And so if I read across on my categories um, column, notice here are my weights. These have to total to 100%. Um, also important in here is the weight of the item in, in the category. So let's look at discussions here. The discussions are all worth 10 points each. And so they're worth one third of uh, the possible uh, one third of this uh, 30 percent. Whereas here, uh, for example, under assignments, I've got some that are worth 10 points and then one that's worth 25. So I want the one that's worth 25 points to have a greater weight in this uh, category. And then the association column here is if it's an item that's um, inside of Brightspace, then you're going to associate it with whatever that item activity is. So for example, assignments is associated with some assignment submission folders, quizzes or associated with some quizzes that are in the course, and uh, same with discussions. So if you're grading something inside of Brightspace, then you have to make that association here um, so that the system knows what you're, what you're where the grade belongs, let's just say that. All right, and you don't have to have everything in a category to use a weighted system. So in this example here, I've got quizzes that are worth 25%, but then I've got some assignments that are worth 15, um, and participation's worth 25. So these particular grade items are included in the weight, and I can tell by the items that are left justified. So I have this category quizzes that's worth 25%, but then these two items here are um, in that category quizzes, whereas this assignment one is going to be worth 15%. So you don't have to have a uh, category, you don't have to have everything in a category. Uh, you can use a combination of categories and um, grade items. And uh, as I mentioned about milestone grades, um, you can create a grade item for a milestone grade, for example, like a midterm grade. You can have extra credit and bonus points. So extra credit 
is basically um, considered, it's factored in when you have a required activity. So a student um, is not going to be penalized if they don't do, if they don't complete the um, activity. This would boost the student's score. So it makes it possible that they might uh, earn more than 100%, whereas bonus refers to an optional activity. The students, um, I'm sorry, extra credit, the students are penalized if they don't complete the activity. Bonus, the students are not penalized for skipping the activity. So a bonus is actually going to improve the student's grade. Um, whereas, like I said, on extra credit, they're required to do this, but it is possible that they could make more than 100%. So um, if you want extra credit points, then you would make sure you have to check this can exceed box. If it is an item that is a bonus, it's an optional activity, then you'd be checking the box that says bonus. When you're running through the setup wizard, you also have to indicate how you want to handle ungraded items, right? Do you want to drop ungraded items or do you want to treat ungraded items as zero? So, and this has to do with how that final grade or what the system is showing you as the final grade um, will appear throughout the uh, course. So if the student, if on day one, you haven't graded anything, then basically the student has an A, right? Because there are no un, uh, you're dropping any ungraded items. If on day one, you use the treat ungraded items as zero, then you'll see the final grade would show that the student has an F and then they're working their way, their way up to an A. So I've seen some people who prefer to say, I wanna drop ungraded items, and I've seen some who say, I want to just treat them as um, zero. If you use the drop ungraded items, by the end of the semester, if the student actually earned a zero, then you need to go into that grade column for that student and enter a zero. Otherwise, uh, you would get to the end of the semester and the system is still thinking there's a grade to come for that student. So that final grade would be off or would not be calculated correctly. All right, and then grade schemes. Um, when you, there are two default, there are two grade schemes when you go into the system that are at the system level. One's called percentage, and then the other one is letter grade. That's a 10 point scale. The percentage grade scheme is uh, the one that's set by default. You can have whatever grade scheme or grade schemes you want. Um, to use and basically percentage grade scheme if you choose that what you're saying is that if the uh, item was worth 10 points and the student uh, earned 8 out of 10 with a percentage grade scheme they would see 80 percent if you're using that when you want to create a new grade scheme you just click on the blue new scheme button and basically you'd be filling out the uh, this um, form here to indicate what that grade scheme looks like. And I really don't want to get down in the weeds with this, but th in this example here, I'm calling it letter grade and I'm saying that the symbol is going to be A through F. And so uh, for an A, it's going to be anything 90% or above. A B would be between 80 and 90, a C, so on and so forth. And you can assign colors to these as well. Like I said, I don't want to get into the weeds, but if anybody has any questions about uh, setting up grade schemes, then let me know. I want to point out this one, though. You could have as a symbol, perhaps uh, pass or fail. And then I could say passing is if you got 90% or above, anything below that would be fail. So if, I, if the uh, grade was calculated at something other than 90%, then the symbol that would be used would be fail. That's kind of harsh. So you could also say you passed or you did not pass. So this symbol here is whatever you want to, um, to type in or use.
All right. Um, you also have to tell the system um, how to handle the final grade. Do you want it to be released automatically? Um, or which, which final grade you want to use and whether or not you want it to be released automatically. So the system will be calculating a final grade. And this one is bit pretty much, you don't have to do anything with it. The system is gonna calculate that for you. So it's based on uh, what you set up in the grade book. The adjusted uh, final grade is, um, gives you the opportunity to look at the grade that's being calculated by the system and you can make some adjustments to it if you want. So let's say, for example, I'm using a weighted system and um, the final grade for a student has calculated to 89.5 and I'm on a 10 point scale. And I've decided that this particular student did enough that I want to move them over into um, to be an A. With the, if I choose the option that I want to use the adjusted final grade, then that means that I can look at that student or students and then just adjust their final grades for them. And so here, that's this step. Um, like I said, you would indicate whether you want the system to use the calculated final grade or the adjusted final grade. And then you need to indicate whether or not you want to automatically release the final grade. So if you're using the um, grade that the system is calculating because that is going to be the student's grade, then you're probably okay with checking the box that says automatically release this final grade. And so if you choose that, the student would see that final grade um, all along, all throughout the semester, what it's calculating as they're uh, earning their Uh, you also need to um, consider the view display options. So there's a student view of the grade book, and then there's a managing view. Managing view is your view, but this in the setup wizard is asking uh, you to indicate how you want the students to be able to see those grade items. And so you have some options. This one here is uh, related to a weighted system. If you're not using a weighted system, then you won't see this one in particular. But um, I can indicate that I want the students to be able to see all four of these points, weight, you know, the weight in the category, the grade scheme symbol, and the grade scheme color. And to further explain this, just let's go back to my example of this points, um, this grade book based on points, 900 points. And so if I choose this display option that I want to see the points grade, if I'm looking at the um, grade book in the instructor view and a student got 18 out of 20, then I would see 18 out of 20. If for a student has 19 out of 20, then I would see it here. This is the instructor view of the grade book. So an individual student would only be seeing their grade. So if I said I wanted the student to see the points and they would see you know, so many points out of so many in this format here. Um, my mouse is going too fast. All right, and so if I choose that I want to display the grade scheme symbol in a percentage scheme, 18 out of 20 would be 90%, right? And 19 out of 20 would be 95%. If it were in a letter grade scheme where I'm on a 10 point scale, then it's showing me that both of these students have an A. If I choose to add color to that, so I've got grade scheme symbol and color. In a percentage scheme, it would be the same percentages, but then the color is added as well. If I choose all three, then I see the 18 out of 20, the 90% and the color. So like I said, in those display options, you get to indicate how you want the students to um, see their grades when they're looking at the grade book and then how you want to see those items as well. And they could be different. You could have them seeing one thing and you seeing another. All right, so I actually want to get into my course. I'm assuming everybody can still see what I'm doing, right? 
Yes. No response. Okay. All right, great. I had actually um, minimized the the uh, video, so I didn't see the thumbs up, but thanks. All right, so when I go into grades, I've not get, gotten into the gradebook before, so I'm here at the setup wizard. Remember I said go all the way down, you click the start. And then I wanna indicate what type of grading system I have. I'm gonna leave this at weighted, and I'll click continue. And then here, what, which grade do I want to release? I'll say I want to release the adjusted final grade and I'm not going to automatically release that final grade to the students. I'm not trying to talk about philosophy at this point. I'm just saying if, we, if I left this option this way, <laughs> this is what would happen. So I click continue. And here, remember, we need to tell the system what do we want to do with ungraded items? Do I want to drop them or do I want to treat them as zero? I'm going to say that I will drop ungraded items and then I do want to automatically keep the final grade updated. I click continue. Step number four talks about grade schemes and which one do I want to be the default? Well, I'm okay with the percentage scheme being my default scheme, so I'll click continue. And um, number of decimal places to uh, display. Remember I said anything that says managing view, that's your view of the grade book. So I'll click continue. And then here, what do I want the students to see when they are looking at the, the, their grades in the grade book? If I just want them to see the points, then I would just um, have points selected. But if I wanted them to see some of these other options, then I would do that. I'm gonna leave it at the default. And then I'll click continue. And then step number seven is basically a summary. It says, these are all the options you did and I can click finish. So when you run through the setup wizard, then you get here where it says, okay, now you can create a new grade category, or maybe you wanna create a new grade item, or you can import whatever. So I'm gonna say that I wanna create a new grade category. And let's say I wanna call this category quizzes. Uh, and anywhere there's an asterisk, that means that's a required field. So I don't have to put a short name or a description. And uh, let's say I'm okay with quizzes being worth 10% of the grade. Here under distribution, I need to indicate how I want these uh, weight to be distributed. Do I want to manually assign weights to the items in the grade category? Do I want to distribute them uh, by points across all items? So if something is worth more points, it would get more uh, weight in that category. Or do I want to weight, distribute the weight evenly? Well, all of my quizzes are going to be worth 100 points. I'm not going to drop any. And remember I said there's a student view. So this is what I want for the student, right? So I'm OK with the points grade. And if I wanted to create another category, remember I'm creating a category right now, if I wanted to create another category immediately, I could click on the save and new. But to save time in this session, I'm just gonna do save and close. And so now in my grade book, uh, I am in the manage grades view or the manage grades tab. And then I get a message here, your uh, final calculated grade only sums to 10%. Well, that's true. I just added one category and it's worth 10%. And if I read across, then I can see um, the weight here. So what I want to do now is add some quizzes and put them in that category. So I'm going to say new and it's going to be a great item. So I'm going to say item and it's numeric. Remember I said most things that you set up will probably be numeric. So I will enter numeric. And then this is going to be quiz one. Okay. And then I need to make sure that I put it in the category called quizzes. So I click on the drop down, and this is going to be a part of that category. And it is worth 100 points. Notice here it says that the weight is 100%. And that's not going to be true, but the first time in this uh, 
selecting an item in this category, it knows that there's only one item in there. So right now it's 100%. Um, this is not going to exceed and it's definitely not a bonus. And so the student view as well as the managing view. So here, if I wanted to change the way the items are displayed to me as the manager, then I could override these and select the ones, but I'm gonna leave those alone. Since I wanna create a new grade item, I can click on the save and new button. I'm gonna create another numeric grade item, and this will be quiz two. I'm also going to put this in the category quizzes. And it is worth 100 points. But notice what happened to my weight. So the system knows there's, all, there's one item in there already. And so this one here, uh, me adding it to that category, would mean that these would be worth, or the two items would be worth 50% each in that category. And then I'm going to click on Save and Close. All right, and so here I see my category quizzes, um, the weight at 10%, and then the two quizzes that are in that category, they're worth 100 points, and um, they're equally weighted in that uh, category. I'm conscious of the time, and it looks like I've got about six minutes. <laughs> um, like I said, usually when I get questions from people, it's because the grade book is not set up the way they want the grades to be calculated or things to be. And so, as I mentioned, I would uh, take some time as I'm going through the setup wizard and choose the options that are appropriate for that particular course. So you can have some Zen um if you do a few things so i know a bunch of us jumped into brightspace and we just got started working however the because of the way um brightspace works that it doesn't create the grade columns for you you can simplify your workflow if you go ahead and set up your grade book first so even though you may um have already gotten in and set up some assignments or uh, you know discussions, whatever. I would still suggest at this point to go in and set up your gradebook because you kind of know what items you're going to be creating. And then at the time that you're creating whatever activity it is, if it's this a discussion, an assignment submission folder, you can associate that with the item that's in the gradebook. If you go back after the fact and start messing around with the gradebook settings and the calculation options, then you might um, significantly affect what uh, the, the day. All right, and then um, grade item visibility. Oh. You can actually, yes, I have a question. Yeah, I have a quick question, but this question immediately will help for help you to create the students' degree. And uh, so now we are online in the um, quiz or test. And then students did the quiz test, how to make it this um, quiz and test link to the grade book. So okay. this is very important. I, I will do it immediately. I mean, they are on the three o'clock, the students will have the uh, if you quit. Yeah. Right. That's a great question. And make sure I have a quiz in this course. So I don't know if I have a quiz in this course or not, but uh, we'll see. If I don't, I'll create one right quick. So I've set up my grade book and I'm saying that I have quiz number one. It's going to be worth 100 points, right? So um, when I go to activities and quizzes, Ah, I have a quiz here. Practice quiz number one. <laughs> when you are creating that quiz, there's an assessment tab. And so here on this assessment tab, I am indicating I want this to be set as graded immediately as soon as they, the student completes it. And then this, I want the grade for this to be associated with whichever grade item in your grade book. 
it would be associated with. These names should probably be um, consistent. So if this were really practice quiz one and I was giving the students a grade for practice quiz one, then my item in the grade book should probably say practice quiz one. So there's no, um, no confusion as to what it is. And then here, auto export to grades. I can choose that. Now the problem with this is right now my quiz number one column says that it's worth 100 points. However, this particular practice quiz only has 50 points in it. So you need to make sure that you're consistent. So I'm just using this as an example because this practice quiz happens to be in this course right now. But if I, like I said, if I were grading this item in the, um, in the course, then the, the grade item in the grade book should also be uh, 50 points and not 100, right? Um, but anyway, that's, that's how you would associate that with the item in the gradebook. And this holds true with all other things. So if it was a discussion, um, if it were an assignment submission folder, you're looking for the assessment. Sometimes there's an assess, most times there's an assessment tab, but sometimes it's not. But uh, you look for the assessment here where you would be, um, need to associate this with the item in the gradebook. Once you do that, when this, and you've chosen the option, I want it to automatically be graded, and then I want it automatically to go to the gradebook. When the student submits, then that grade should go over there. Now, this, of course, assumes that uh, everything in that quiz, um, the system will automatically be able to grade. So let's say, for example, you've got some short answer questions or some written response questions. Those type questions you would have to actually answer. It's different from having a true, false, or a multiple choice or a multiple answer where the uh, Brightspace system would be able to know whether or not the student got the question right or wrong. Okay, so hopefully that answered your question. Did it? Um, and we are a few minutes over. Um, so basically, the only other thing that I wanted to kind of discuss real quickly was actually entering grades. Um, and I will try to go through this kind of quickly. So uh, I think it was last fall, uh, Brightspace now synchronizes grades between the assessments and the gradebook because you actually, if the assessment tool in the gradebook. Before you had to grade something using the tool and then the grade would transfer over to the gradebook, like the quizzes. So for a short answer, you had to uh, grade it over there on the quizzes and then it would push the grade over to the gradebook. Now the grades actually flow both ways. However, I, I still suggest grading it using the assessment tool if there's a grading option that exists there. So for example, if it's a discussion topic and the assignment submission folder, quizzes or whatever, go there and grade it. You can utilize the save draft. So let's say you, um, you know it's gonna take you maybe 24 hours, uh, over a 24 hour period to grade all of the students' work. Then you can save everybody's as a draft. And when you've graded everyone, then you can publish everybody at one time. Um, anything that's not, uh, you know, outside of a bright space, then you'd actually have to grade that directly into the gradebook. The save draft is not available there. However, you can hide and unhide the grade items or use the date availability to push those grades out. Um, and so what I mean by using the tool here on the assignments tool, if I were grading this, I would come here grade and then um, I can decide whether I want to publish this person's grade right now or I want to save it as a draft. If I publish it right now, then that means the student would get a notification that that grade is available. So if I've got 100 students in the class and I've graded student number one, um, then some of his friends or whatever may be wondering where their grade is. And so if you want to, like I said, save them as a draft, and then publish them all at the same time. You can do the save draft. And then what happens is you would come back 
um, when you've got everything uh, saved as a draft, you can then just check this box here for all the students and then use the publish feedback um, button to publish everybody's grade at the same time. Um, and I think I will stop here.